garrison canteen, food and alcohol could be purchased by soldiers. However, regular money was no good. Instead, tokens had to be purchased, which then could be used in the canteen to buy whatever the soldier wanted. The date these tokens were introduced is unclear, but they were certainly in use by the 1880s. In total, there were six tokens with different values, a quarter penny, a half penny, one pence, three pence, four pence, and six pence. The tokens pictured here are a half penny and four pence. Regimental silver is always intriguing. Here we have two name placeholders from the officer's mess of the 3rd Militia Battalion, Leinster Regiment. The battalion was based in Burr Barracks. The pair of name holders takes the form of the badge used on the officer's forage cap between 1881 and 1902. Additionally, Turd has been added to the scroll, which bears the regiment's name. This object, which might be something you might expect to find in a junkyard, is actually a brass gas fitting from Burr Barracks, which would have illuminated the various quarters or even the coffee bar. Gas works were proposed for the barracks in 1862 and were subsequently constructed in the southwest corner of the 14 acres. Gas was produced from coal and stored in a gas emitter and then was carried to the bar barracks by various underground pipes. The flow of gas became inadequate at the start of the 20th century and new gas pipes had to be laid. Pictured here are the campaign medals for the Second Anglo-Boer War, or better known as simply the Boer War, of Major and Adjunct Paget Edward Stuart Reeves, Leinster Regiment. Paget was born in Dublin and joined the Limerick Militia and was subsequently transferred to the 2nd Battalion Leinster Regiment. He was later appointed adjunct of the militia in Burr. He was responsible for a major recruitment drive in the county, which saw the militia's battalion's numbers close to 800 at the end of the 19th century. Paget served with the militia for two years in South Africa during the Boer War and returned home with the regiment on the 26th of May 1902. He brought back many souvenirs, including a baboon and vervet monkey, both later presented to the Royal Zoological Gardens in Dublin. Pictured here is an example of a First World War era Royal Air Force message streamer. These colourful streamers were used by pilots to drop messages to troops on the ground, as there was no means of communication. A handwritten note would be placed within a pouch and the message was thrown from the aircraft. The example here is quite special as it was used in connection with the RAF Aerodrome, which was built at the barracks in February 1919. Galvanized shed housed six Avro 504K planes, which were used in connection with anti-IRA operations. Life in the barracks might not have been easy, being subject to military rule and set routines. However, soldiers would get to participate in various sporting activities. Indeed, it is believed that rugby was brought to Burr by the army. Recruitment posters for the Leinster Regiment even advertised the regiment is famous at war and sports. Here we have a sports medal awarded to Private Duane, who won the medal for tug-of-war in 1919 when he was part of the depot staff in Burr Barracks. Swords were the sidearms of officers and they were to be carried at all times. Officers typically had to purchase their own swords, not to mention their own uniforms. This sword is an example of a light infantry pattern sword. The blade has been beautifully etched with a bugle and Kings County rifles. The sword was retailed by Richardson & Co of Dublin. The Kings County Militia, or Kings County Rifles, was raised originally in 1793 and would later go on to become the 3rd Battalion Leinster Regiment in 1881. Various commanding officers in charge of the Leinster Regiment Depot and 100 Regimental Recruiting Area would come and go. Pictured here we have the Great War Medals of Lieutenant Colonel Harvey Beecham Wellman. Born in Cork in 1863, he was commissioned as a lieutenant into the Wiltshire Regiment and was later promoted to captain in the Shropshire Light Infantry. While serving in Hong Kong with this latter regiment in 1892, he and other men volunteered to help fight the outbreak of bubonic plague. These volunteers would later become to be known as the Whitewash Brigade. 
For Wellman's service, he received the Gold Hong Kong Plague Medal. This medal is located in the Shropshire Regimental Museum at Shrewsbury Castle. Wellman later served with the Manchester Regiment and was then transferred to the Leinster Regiment on the 16th of September 1905. He remained with the Leinster Regiment until he retired on half pay on the 3rd of July 1912. With the outbreak of Great War, Major Wellman rejoined the Leinsters and was posted as commanding officer of the depot at Burr Barracks. In January 1916, while based in Burr, he was heavily involved with the Comforts for Soldiers Fund for the Leinsters. He remained as commanding officer of the depot until June 1917 when he was given a staff appointment in France as area commandant. Here we have an example of the 1878 pattern blue cloth home service helmet with its iconic spike, which was probably of German influence. These helmets are often seen in contemporary pictures of Burr Barracks. This particular example is an officer's helmet which belonged to the 15th Earl of Huntington, who was second in command of the 3rd Battalion Leinster Regiment. In 1894, the Earl was implicated in the Burr Barracks affair, which was a major scandal at the time and even mentioned in the House of Commons. A group of mass militia officers had broke into the quarters of Sergeant Major Fox and assaulted two of his living servants. The servants initially identified the Earl as one of the party, but he was later found to have a solid alibi and was acquitted. With the outbreak of the Boer War in October 1899, the third Blensters were asked if they would volunteer to serve in the conflict, as at the time militia units could not be ordered on active service but rather had to volunteer. The militia went from Burr to Shrapnel Barracks, Woolwich. Here a special colour party was organised to bring the colours back to Burr for safekeeping, where they were placed in the Earl's house at Shara Vogue. The Earl had initially volunteered for service in, out in South Africa but was found unfit for service, likely owing to an accidental injury he sustained several weeks previously while out hunting. On 28th of February, he resigned his commission as second in command of the Third Leinsters. Despite not going to fight in South Africa, the Earl and Countess of Huntingdon did much to collect gifts and comforts for the men of the battalion fighting in the war. Here we have a number 5 Mark I Mills bomb. This was however never a live grenade and was used instead for throwing practice. The Mills bomb was introduced as the standard pattern grenade for the British Army in 1915. As this example has originated from Burr, it was most likely a practice grenade which would have been used for training soldiers on the 14 acres to prepare them for using actual live grenades while serving in France or Belgium.